were tied to consumption of contaminated beef. Good. Uh, good Wednesday morning. Uh, well, evening, afternoon, Thursday, Friday, whenever I get around to uploading this or whenever uh, YouTube was acting all sorts of stupid yesterday. So whenever I can get it uploaded to that, just, you know, whenever. Make sure it's good. I'm sure to be good. It's always good. It's got to be good. You're breathing, right? You woke up on the right side of the dirt today, right? Okay? That's good. The rest of it, 90% of the rest of it is up to us how it comes out. So, that rambling out of the way. Hey! So, we are now. <laughs> Alright, this is going to be the last day I say, uh, last time I say three weeks. Say we are three weeks sans seizure medication. Three weeks with no seizure medication, no zanisamide, no Depakote, no Keppra. Gone. Gone, gone, gone. Bagged up. As a matter of fact, I'm starting day one of no uh, no Depakote myself. Although my reasoning is a little more shallow. Hopefully. Hopefully, if I stop taking the Depakote, my hair will get to uh, you know, fill in in those thinning areas. Yeah, it's all in the shallow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so far, I mean, the boy's been running a little bit late, getting out the door for school. Uh, I mean, even today, I said, Joe, you gotta go, you know, dunk your head. He's got hair like a sheep to buck. Go dunk your head real quick. You know, run the shower, see your head in there. You know what? And just brush it back. Yeah, you know, make it look tame. Instead, he goes out looking like a fucking Houdini at his worst. All right, Poindexter. You know, you got like the high top wavy, you know, shit. It's like, <laughs> like Gumby with an S curl, <laughs> with his finger in the socket. <laughs> but I said, Joe, go, go fix your head. I can't, I'm going to be late. I can't do the voice he did, but... And out the door he went. Like, you son of a bitch. And now on top of that, for breakfast, he decided to eat my lunch. You bum. But, needless to say, uh, if you follow me on, on the book of the face, you'll see that, uh, yeah. My boy is making that triumphant return to the young man that he started out trekking towards there to be, and uh, without those uh, those meds, you know, slowing down, retarding brain processes, he's uh, so far uh, mentally. He's emotionally, uh, physically, uh, things are just going up and up and up and up and up. Love it. Uh, I mean, just the other day, uh, I caught the tail end of his practice. He was playing defense, um, and he was doing a little one-on-one -on -one work with this uh, another teammate who is, I believe, he said he was Brazilian. But nonetheless, the kid's good. He's shorter than my son. He's fast. He's quick on his toes. He has great ball control. And in a stereotype moment, if he is Brazilian, then you know the boy who came out the womb juggling that ball and just breaking ankles, okay? Joe ran him from corner to corner. Almost, you know, one end of the 18, the other 18, end of the 18. Kid couldn't get past. Each time he tried to hello, put a shot on frame, boom, Joe was there stopping it. And he, he wasn't stabbing either. He was getting his body in the way. Uh, and I watched him. I mean, his footwork was like looking these, they're looking at these, uh, these running backs, these wide receivers, uh, you know, training camp. It's like, damn, the boy is back. The boy is back. him off the Zenismide, and uh, I'm 
started a uh, CBD oil, wormwood, and B6 regimen. Uh, also, cutting out even more sugar from his diet. We never had much sugar in the house as far as sugary drinks. Uh, you know, if there was any kind of iced tea mix in the house, it was mine. Mine, 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 mine. Everybody else could have water. When we did buy juice when they were younger, we always watered it down. Always watered down the juice. Uh, one, there's too much sugar in it. Two, it makes it last longer. I'm not stupid. So far, the only uh, only complaint that, uh, or the only less than favorable if you can even call it that, uh, side effect, I guess, uh, that my son's come across was that uh, we're two days, three days into our new regimen, his new regimen, and he said each day, at one point, just only happened once each day, uh, it, he said it felt like his left hand wasn't there. You know, he said it didn't get tingly, it didn't get numb. It didn't feel funny. It just felt like, you know, from the wrist to the fingertips, just like it wasn't there. Like you could go like that and wouldn't feel anything. He said it comes and goes. You know, just as quick as it comes, it goes just as quick. And then that's it. So we're thinking maybe that's probably uh, a reaction with wormwood. So we decided we're going to pull back on that a little bit, and it could also be, uh, being that we're just now entering three weeks, it could be the Zenisamai working its uh, rest of the way out of the system, but he's getting up easier, let me tell you, the other day, I showed up to his game, over the side, parked the car, forgot I had my headlights on, battery dies. Thankfully, one of his teammates, uh, one of our old classmates, uh, was at the game, and he uh, does roadside service for a living. So he's got his truck with him, and not expecting him to do it, really. I said, hey, Joe, I'm going to move there and ask Mr. Haynes for a, uh, if we can get a jump, if he doesn't mind. And no hesitation, my son looks at me and goes, all right, and hops out and and goes, God, let me tell you, I can uh, speak from experience with being on Adderall. It helps while you're on it, but when you notice the difference in yourself between being on and being off, <clears throat> like my, yeah, my brain's racing even more, but I'm funnier. I'm coming up with more funny shit, but even more important, I don't feel as if I have um, a creative leash uh, tightening around my, my, my brain neck. <laughs> you know, everything's flowing. Um, and I'm not, I, I feel less of an inner. I feel less of an inner uh, cranial turmoil, if you want to call it that. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and with having uh, been in a mental institute for a brief period of time, and coming home and working on myself and fixing myself and you know, figuring things out, uh, it, it, it was scary because I had been one person for... 30 some years and now I'm trying to live life you know, in a better way live life the way I should have been and you, know, you change one thing everything else changes everything else has to change and I didn't know how to live as that person I'm still working on that at times but I can see the same thing in him we've asked him do you feel better do you feel a little more clear, do you feel, and he does. He feels clear in the head. Um, he was having a hard time trying to explain it. I said, 
but overall you feel like better. You feel healthier. You feel uh, you know, smarter. He's like zinging these one-liners like he used to when he was a little guy. You know, he grab his blanket and he grabbed my blanket one time. He starts heading upstairs. He said, "Where are you going?" He goes, "Your room, dummy. Go to bed. Your blanket." And it just keeps on going. <laughs> You know, my, my, my guy is back. Um, but yeah, he's... Uh, I can see the look on his face, and I'm looking in his eyes, and there's a couple times he uh, was getting upset. He was holding it back, but a parent knows. And that's when I addressed it. I said, you, you got any concerns? You worried about not knowing how to, how to live this way now, right? Because... You haven't been that guy since since you were you know, about ten years old, you know. And at ten, a lot had uh, around those years there had been a lot going on uh, that that hurt him. You know, the passing of his favorite person in the world, you know, his uh, his grandfather, my father-in-law passed. Uh, me and my bullshit, you know, it, it it hurt a young boy at that age, you know. Uh, those meds weren't helping to like, heal and, and mend things, but I think now, just as I was going through some stuff, the true Joseph at his heart, at the core, the boy who, when his sister, uh, I think she fell and, and knocked a tooth out and her mouth was all bloody, the little boy who would barely speak takes his wubby, his blankie, his man, that thing was stuck to him until he was about 11 years old, and said, here, Thithith, use this. And, you know, to feel better, she's, you know, it's like, put it on your face. And then he took the corner of it and kind of dabbed the blood off of her cheek. What a young man. What a young man. And don't get me wrong, I love my family. I love the shit out of my daughters, too. Uh, <laughs> but they don't have problems. <laughs> Thank God. Um, they have radio shows and projects and field hockey. So, you know, now that uh, if things point to him not being epileptic, we're going to have to uh, revamp the, the title of the show, I guess. <laughs> and uh, the title of the series. And he's going to vote me. See wearing his t-shirts, <laughs> but yeah, so it's all good. He, uh, we're working on it. And I said, don't be afraid. You know, the person that you're returning to, he's a great kid. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants to do. He's confident in everything, and you can't stop him. This was the the, the little boy that I told people. Look, don't tell him he can't do it. Because he will prove you wrong and do it and do it really well. And if he has to practice at it, well, then he'll practice at it and do it even better. And they are tearing up this road from one end to the other. Um, and I'm seeing a return to that kid. Uh, you know, he's dealing with things more, uh, he's better dealing with things emotionally and his thinking process is off the chart as compared to what it was earlier. He, uh, he and I still think a lot. Uh, we think very similar. But he also sees like, the little things that I do and then uses alternative thinking, which is awesome as well. Now we are looking at uh, possible culprit, possible cause of these seizures uh, of being sleep apnea. Uh, coming home from the hospital, he was five weeks premature. Uh, lungs were underdeveloped. Um, and he was on a monitor. As a matter of fact, when we were finally able to bring him home, uh, he had to come home with a heart monitor on. Uh, they said that there were times when his, he would stop breathing.
breathing, and then, you know, it would trigger a cardiac uh, moment, and then the alarm on this machine would start going off. Well, we're thinking, I, I just, everything started to come together one night, and uh, one morning, I just, you know, thought about it, thought about it, and said, you know what? Because he's still breathing so shallow at night, maybe that alarm wasn't going off. It's a digital thing. Maybe the alarm wasn't going off because he stopped breathing or his heart rate had stopped. It's not mon it's not picking up his heart rate. So it's sending off signals and um well, that train that train of thought went down there But it, it were the thing was that it, it wasn't as accurate. Uh breathing shallow, but it was enough for him. Now that he's a little older and a lot more active, uh, you know, he's going to need more oxygen to the brain at night during rest or even throughout the day. And he's just not getting it. So my wife got the ball rolling yesterday uh, to get a sleep have a sleep study done. Met with his pediatrician practitioner there, explained to her what was going on, and she had asked if any of the neurologists ever asked uh, or suggested a sleep study. She says, nope. You just, you've been going through this back and forth and all this stuff for four years, five years, and... Activity, but it wasn't physically being uh, exhibited. So, long story short, um, we're looking at the doctor is agreeing with that this could all have been possibly uh, linked to sleep apnea, lack of oxygen to the brain at night. Uh, because if you think about it, he never had these seizures when he would spend the night over at his aunt's house. He wouldn't have these seizures when we're on vacation, uh, you know, whether we're in a, a hotel room or um, you know, we're staying in the, the, the family's house in the Poconos, except for that one time. I mean, we, gave, we had to give him allergy medication and knowing it, the drowsy formula had an adverse effect with the seizure medication that triggered a lot more seizures. So, um, but other than that, he's only had them at home. At home, you're in your room, you're in your bed, you're surrounded by your family. So you're going to feel a lot more comfortable, laid back, You know, and less worried, so your heart rate's going to drop. And with that, since he's so comfortable and so relaxed, it all drops. His breathing gets shallow, too shallow. Brain says, hey, you gotta breathe, and then starts going into reset mode, as we like to call it once in a while. Um, begins to have a seizure. Now, it doesn't happen in these other places because even though you're asleep, and I can relate to this. Um, you, you fall asleep with your subconscious knowing that you're not in your own bed. You're not at home. You're not in the same town. Uh, the only thing that remains the same is that you're still near your family. Now, you might be a little bit closer than what you want to be <laughs> with your family. Instead of being in your own room, you might be in the bed next to them. And you're like, I don't want to hear what they're doing. Dad farts in my 
on snores and all that shit. Um, so, you know, even in your sleep, you're slightly on guard. That's why when we were out at these places, waking him up was just like, I'm up, yep, yep, good. But waking him up at home, it was, you know, he almost had to like, there were times when I had to tip his bed and roll him out. That boy was just not getting up. So, there you have it. And now, sadly, we thought you can go to the pediatrician to get it done, but the pediatrician said, we're all for it, that's a great idea, especially, you know, being mom, being dad, you guys have this, this instinct, basically, uh, about your children, and even though they're doctors, they're not mom and dad, to our child at least. for the sleep study, but in order to have it done, you've got to go to the uh, an ENT doctor, son of a bitch, so thankfully, we have an ENT uh, that we took our daughters to, and my wife and I are pleased with uh, the work and his thorough uh, questioning, and he's just, from start to finish, great A, gotta love it. Even calls them, uh, calls for the kids at home. You know, calls to check on them. The girls had their tonsils and which removed, and they uh, called to make sure that they were feeling well and everything was on the up and up. Now they uh, at his appointment yesterday. They had asked if uh, if he was ever told he had uh, large tonsils. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the answer is no. Quite the opposite. So she asked about the adenoids, because they, you know, they two separate things, you know, we're like, yeah, we understand. She goes, there's a possibility <clears throat> that his adenoids are too large and could be causing uh, the lack of oxygen to the brain. Uh, but the young lady also did reiterate, you, know, you guys are mom and dad, you know them better than we do, you have these parental feelings. Um, very well could be adenoids, it could be that's causing the sleep apnea, it could be sleep apnea on its own and you need a CPAP machine, um, or we may just have to suck it up and accept it as, well, he is an epileptic. Um, you know, we're all for it, my wife says yes, I understand and I'm prepared, although I see how she is stressed to the Hilt, man. I'm so worried about it when he goes to sleep. You can't be worried. I mean, don't be. We're going in the right direction. We, you know, he hasn't been seizure free this long in so long. You know, we took him off the meds. He had three, but that was as he was coming off the meds. Now he's off and has zero. Whereas before, when he was on a regular intake of these meds, they would happen with or without meds, you know, let's say, you know, you forgot to take them one night or whatever, or one morning, you know, going in the right direction, rest on that, I hate it when I can't fix something for, for my, for my loves, but we're all going to get there. positive that uh, the sleep study says hey yeah you know homie here is a uh, sleep apnea and that's um, what's most likely causing his seizures and get him off these meds that are slowing his brain down and it's just it's bringing him down you know he was becoming so withdrawn from from the kids that he he grew up with more or less, you know, on teams, um, you know, especially with being in special ed, 
excuse me, he's seeing the, you know, the rift grow wider between he and his friends because of his comprehension level, uh, you know, and us having to shadow him in case of a, uh, you know, case of a seizure, we'd be there with his medication, you know, but, you know, we're letting the slack, we're, you know, put some slack in the line and, uh, Let's get in our, you know, let's get into some trouble. At least they'd be smart enough to go like, "Hey, Joe, you don't want to be a part of this. You know, your pops are going to whoop your ass, or you're going to ruin everything." You know what I mean? These are the kids. Like when I was growing up, I made friends with the kids that were used to yeah, getting into some trouble, you know, causing something here, causing something there. I just had to talk with them the other day. If you're ever out with your friends and. They all decide, hey, let's go do you know, such and such, and you know it's not the best idea, or it's something that you don't want to be a part of, and never had to worry about this with them. Just tell them, nah, nah, I'm good, I don't, nah, not a good idea, or no, it's just not for me. So even if you have to call for a ride home, give us a call. There's no shame in keeping your butt out of trouble. Trust me. Myself, man, I don't know. One day from the next, I think what I've done is just tossed everything into the boy as of late, and and my oldest current success, and my youngest, uh, she's coming up on uh, I think a couple months. She starts field hockey, and she's got this other thing she signed up. A couple of things she signed up for already this year, so it's all good, um, you know, just the, uh, to see, and, and I don't know, maybe there's a connection because we're so close and because I know that I've, you know, hurt him so bad and he knows that I'm sorry about that and he knows that you know, he is my best, best friend, um, seeing him like this like your average 14 year old boy and seeing him who he is again uh, I haven't felt joy like that in a long time and it feels good it feels good now if I can get that paper going shoot I feel good in my pocket too feel good everywhere alright Rambling Boy is going to stop, and I uh, wish you all a great day, morning, afternoon, weekend, whenever it is you get to watch this, or whatever it is I post it, just make sure it's great, and I'll talk to you all later. Good day, good Thursday, good thing I know it's Thursday because I was driving home last night, thinking it was Thursday night.
last night he didn't practice his breathing techniques before bed, or at least not as thoroughly as he has in the prior evenings, which surprised us that he would actually do that. Uh, it shows that he wants to put these things behind him. Uh, with the level of frustration on his face this morning, uh, the upset, the, the, my wife is pulling her hair out. And, I mean, being married to me, is enough to do that to a person then you throw on top of that you know our child's health it's like you know it's amazing she hasn't lost all of her hair yet uh, so but you know we have to stay focused on the facts you know life has us programmed and rewired to automatically think worst case worst or accept yeah, defeat accept uh, defeat when it has even been offered uh, meaning we are reprogrammed to feel that in this case uh, you know we're back to square one nah no we're not because we you know it's not like he was on another medication that failed it's not like we had gone into, uh, deep into uh, this uh, notion that it's caused by, that seizures are being caused by sleep apnea. We haven't even, you know, cracked the, uh, cracked the surface on, on that venture yet. So, no, don't feel as if we have to start over. You know, even if it was on the road, as a bump, you know, when you know you have to go back to square one and you know you're going to keep doing what you have to do, then it's not starting over. And it's just another, it's another detour. It's another bump in the road. You know, keep going, keep going. As long as there's air in my lungs and the sun rises the next day, I'm going to keep going. Makes you wonder if uh, not practicing his sleeping uh, sleeping techniques. <laughs> if not uh, practicing his breathing techniques last night uh, aided in uh, last night's seizure because it actually happened. Um, think we were around midnight yet. Usually, usually you have them around 1, between 1 and 3 a.m. Then again, you did get in the bed by 9, so if it was three hours later, yeah, but regardless, it wasn't, uh, you know, 1 or 3 o'clock in the morning like they usually are. regimen uh, CBD B6 we are holding off on the wormwood because he has said that since he started on this uh, each day he's had like we call it ghost hand uh, he said his left hand would all of a sudden just feel like it's not there you know um, it wasn't tingly you know, it wasn't like numb or, or feeling feeling numb or like you know, the circulation was cut off he said it just literally felt like it was not there and he says I'm looking at it I see it's there but even if I shake it you don't feel anything normal and he says just as quick as it comes it goes I'm like all right we're at least that, that that part's good we're going to uh monitor that of course doing wrong 
it. We're going to work on it, work at it. And he's going to jump on board and help out too. And we're going to uh, we're going to get on top of this. Sure as shit stinks, we're going to get on top of this. <laughs> All right. Yo. Funny thing. I laughed on the phone with the receptionist, but I don't think she... I don't think she understood my joke, but it wasn't necessarily a joke. Okay, she, uh, I called to switch my appointment, and she says, I have an opening on Monday afternoon. I'm like, that's perfect. Uh, what time is that? She says, uh, it'll be at 2.30. I said, ah, that's great. I'm going to the dentist at 2.30, because my 2.30. And she says, that's right, 2.30, 2.30. Ah, okay. Open window. Comedy. Humor. <laughs> right on out. Get it? 2.30 is the appointment time. Tooth hurty. Did my tooth hurt? Tooth hurty. Play all words. Is this thing on? 